Hey gamers, welcome back to Creative Gamers. Today we're taking a look at the brand new GameHub V5.3.5 update, and if you've ever wanted to play your favorite PC games right on your mobile, this is honestly the easiest way to do it. This update improves emulator performance, adds customizable controller sensitivity, and fixes key bugs like the HUD temperature glitch and the text deletion issue. And just to mention quickly, this is not the Play Store version, because that version doesn't have the option to upload PC games. In this video, I'll quickly guide you through what's new, how to set it up, and the best settings for smooth performance. Let's get started. Start by opening the latest GameHub v5.3.5 version. On the home screen, you won't notice anything new because the UI looks the same. So go straight to my home screen. From here, tap the Steam icon to check out your Steam games. Log in with your Steam account, and once you're signed in, your account details will show up immediately. Tap the Steam icon again, and your entire Steam library will appear. You can play any Steam game from here, but remember that streaming requires at least a mid-range device. I'm not testing Steam today, so let's continue. Go back to my home screen and open the PC emulator option. Select import PC game, then open your file manager and navigate to the folder where your PC game files are stored. Select the exe file of the game you want to play. Once done, your game will appear right on the home screen under my games. I've already added several PC games like this, so let's move straight into applying the best settings for smooth gameplay. Open any game settings. In general settings, leave the resolution at default if you have a mid-range or high-end phone. But if you're using a low-end device, set the resolution to 960 x544 to get a more stable frame rate. Next, go to compatibility settings. Keep the compatibility layer as default, then change the translation perms to the extreme preset for better stability. After that, go to the GPU driver settings. If your phone uses a Snapdragon processor, select the latest turnip GPU driver. If you have a Snapdragon 8 Elite device, choose COM819. For Mali or MediaTek users, you'll need to stick with the system driver. Next, scroll down to the DXVK version. Snapdragon users should leave this as default, while Mali or Media tech users need to choose DXVK 1.11.1 Molly Fix. Then go to the VKD3D version and set it to the latest Proton 3.0. After that, head to the CPU translator section and select the latest Fex version. With that, all your emulator settings are complete. You may notice that the new update removed the option to toggle touch controls on or off, though it's unclear why they removed it. Now open your game. The emulator will download firmware, GPU drivers, and other required files. This download is around 500 memodrabires, so wait for it to finish. Once everything is prepared, the game will start normally. I'm beginning with GTA 5, and the game is running stable on my Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. I'm getting an average of around 35 FPS, and the overall gameplay feels very smooth. I didn't notice any major stutters, though there are small FPS drops when driving really fast on a bike, which is normal for this emulator. Even with those minor dips, there's no heavy lag or freezing, and the game still feels completely playable and enjoyable on mobile. It's honestly impressive to see GTA 5 running this well on a phone. Next, I tested Spider-Man Miles Morales using the exact same settings. When you launch the game, you'll see a small pop-up on the screen. Just click OK using the mouse pointer and it will continue loading normally. Once you reach the main menu, make sure to open the display settings and set everything to low, because this is a heavy next-gen title, and running it on mobile requires lighter graphics. I skipped ahead directly to the open world section, and the game is running at around 15 to 20 FPS while swinging through the city. The graphics do look a bit blurry since we lowered everything, but honestly, the gameplay stays smooth enough to enjoy if you're okay with reduced visuals. Even during during fights and fast movement, the game manages to hold that 15 to 20 FPS range, which is surprisingly solid considering how demanding this game is. And just to clear it up again, I'm running this on a Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, so please don't spam the comments asking which processor I'm using. After spending time with this update, I didn't feel any major difference in performance compared to previous versions. However, the small optimizations and bug fixes are still helpful, and it's always a good idea to keep your emulator updated to get the best compatibility and smoothest gameplay possible. If you want me to test more games or compare updates, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay creative, gamers.